Hi friends, it's Quinby, the Grateful Queen, here on YouTube, and today I'm having a very special guest, my mom. Oh, hello everyone. AKA Grateful Babette. Many of you who are on my usual lives every Friday on the channel at 5 p.m. Pacific time, you've chatted with my mom, Barbara, but she goes by Babette, and so we thought it would be fun since she's over here tonight for dinner to do a little intro, and we're going to be talking in this video about thrifting, how to thrift at the Goodwill like a pro. So we'll share thrifting tips and maybe tell some stories about our favorite finds at the thrift store and all that stuff, all the stuff we love about thrifting. So if you're in the chat, it would be so great if you put in the chat, what do you love about thrifting? What's your favorite thing? Do you have any great thrift store stories? Do you have something you found at the thrift store that you absolutely love and cherish? Where do you go first in the thrift store? Tell us about your experience of thrift store shopping and we will share ours. But first, I see some friends coming in the chat. Thank you so much for being here, friends, especially because it is Sunday. Sunday, September 27th, not my usual scheduled time on Friday. So thanks for taking some time out of your Sunday evening to hang out with my mom and I. So mom, why don't you introduce yourself and tell our friends in the reselling community a little bit about you, maybe a little bit about your history and love of thrifting. Well, um, all I can say is I have been thrifting for so long, I don't know how many years, but I have always loved antiques and old things. And there's something about clothing even, especially vintage clothing also, that has a history. And it seems so much more interesting to me. Um, it actually has a feeling. That's what I think. Anyway. Um, I probably started out because I really needed to save money mm -hmm. and um, it was a great way to get used clothing. Uh, I even worked in a uh, consignment, children's consignment shop when my kids were little. So they were always dressed beautifully. We were like the best kid, the yeah. best dressed kids in town. That was our reputation. So my mom has mostly been a single mom. We have she had six kids, so it's a big family, and um, we grew up in a wealthy New England town. And there were thrift stores. You were such a good thrift store shopper that you could yeah. find us. Like we were the best dressed kids. No one would have any idea yeah. that maybe we didn't come from a lot of money. So, I mean, it, it was fantastic in that way, too. That yes. Why do you guys thrift? Like, how did you get into thrifting? And when did it turn from thrifting for you into reselling? Let's say hi to some friends that are in the chat. And then if you have any questions from my, for my mom, Grateful Babette, or for me about thrifting, make sure to put it in there. But we'd love to hear from you. How did you get into thrifting? What do you love about it? And friends, this is my sister, Thora. Hey, ladies, she says. Thora Conrad is my sister. She lives in New Hampshire. We're from the East Coast area. And Isla Dreams reseller was here. Excited for you and your mom's live today. So glad I came on to watch some resellers. And you were the first choice, Quimby. Oh, thank you. And then Leslie had a reseller's passion, though. I love you all. I know there's so many great resellers in our community. And... Um, Jacob is here. Hey, Jacob. Hello, Quimby and Miss Barbara. Grateful <laughs> Queen and Grateful Babette. I put on Carol King's tapestry album for the occasion. Oh. Jacob, I think I need Perfect. like... <laughs> I think I need like intro music. I notice when we come on Friday, everybody's here for the Live at Five on Friday, all the resellers in the community. Mm -hmm. And we're always like just excited. You can feel the excitement in the chat. And it's that's like, we need a little idea, music. But Carol King, well, oh, that's perfect for me. That was... <laughs> Yeah. That would be perfect. Deborah Anderson is here. How's it going, Deborah? How's it going? Going back to work. So thrilled to be here. I am so happy to have you. How are things going where you are? Deborah, like me, is a part time reseller and she um, got to work from home for a while and now I think she's back at the office. So I'm curious how that's going. Dresden Avenue is here. Hello. Thank you so much for coming over. What is your history with thrifting? What do you love about it? How did you get into it? Do you have it like, what's your best thrift? thrift store score like you have a fine that you're like oh the day i found this and where do you go first in the thrift store 
Barbara is beautiful, says a reseller's oh. passion, our good friend Leslie. We oh always see God. her. I know, Thank Leslie. You. Leslie is such a bright light in our community of positivity. Oh and Debbie R is here. Hi, Quendi. So good to see you, Debbie R. So many, and Rhonda Creek made it. Hey, Rhonda. Tell us about your experience with thrift store shopping. And James is here, Mom. You would just love James. Yes. I mean, I know the name. I know. I recognize. I know. He helps comment. moderate, which I, I yes. so appreciate. And he's in the chat and he always has very thoughtful comments. And I just think a lot of these people, like if we went and did like a meetup, we'd be like, these are our people. Right. These are our people. We, we, we know them. I know. Yeah. It's it's so great. And I uh, the, the other Babette. So Babette Sabol. Oh, yes. I recognize that name. She's yes. always here on Friday. And she's like, I can't oh, wait. Nice to meet you. She says, hello, Grateful Babette. We have the same hair, but I cut mine short right now. You know, I've been tempted. There are times where it's like, just cut it off. But I've been a long hair girl always. Polly from Hunter Ryan says, I grew up with a single mom in the 70s, so she had to stretch the pennies. Mm -hmm. What do they say? Like, how far can you stretch a dollar bill oh, or something gosh. like that? It's yeah. like, but my mom was the type of mom, honestly, wasn't it like, okay, we could have like, like you would buy the velvet shoes from the thrift store over anything. Like we'd go out, we'd go without maybe some other stuff so we right. could have the best little dresses. The most, <laughs> the most beautiful. I know. Because beauty, it's worth it. Mm. Don't you think? I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Deborah says, I never entered a thrift store until about a decade ago. <gasps> wow. <laughs> I just remember going since we were little, like you went yeah. to the thrift store. Um, I love it. My first thrift store experience was when I volunteered for a nonprofit and they had a thrift store. I fell in love with it. I'll tell you, I don't know which one that was, Deb, Deborah, but it's like, if there's a church or a hospice thrift store, that's where you want to go, especially if you're at all interested in vintage, that's where you're going to sure. find that stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the church thrift stores, there's a hospice. I used to work for hospice and there was, there was a hospice thrift store in town and not to be too morbid or anything, but often after a patient will die, will die or something, they donate their whole estate. So you're getting older vintage and antique stuff. So if you're interested in certain things like vintage, look for hospice stores or church stores or things like that. You're going to find some great stuff there. Um, James says, hey, mom, I started reselling in 1996 on eBay, selling my own stuff at first, then anything that wasn't nailed down. Yeah. Oh, and Annabelle made it. I know. Annabelle is here. Hi from Kona. I didn't know that's where you were, Annabelle. I'm so glad you made it. Some of you I get to talk to a little bit. Like, I put another video out today. It just came out, actually, this afternoon, so you probably didn't see it. It's like a, I bought a wholesale lot from Goodwill Online. Oh, wow. So I, so yeah. I just put that video out, and I was talking to Annabelle over there. So, Mom, how what, what would you say is a tip that you have for people that are, like, newer to thrifting or... Um, just want to maybe improve their thrifting skills. How do you find, like my mom is like the thrift queen. Like she goes in there. It's like she finds stuff that it's like she has such a good eye. What's one tip that you might be able to give people for a way that you find like designer or high quality or more expensive items that they might be able to sell online? Let's talk about clothing first because it could be home goods too. She and I both love Antique. antiques and thrifting. And my mom always had an antique booth. But what's one of the ways when you go in and you're flipping through rack, how do you how do you find the good stuff? Well, first and probably easiest is if there's a label okay. that you recognize and that you know is quality, so you would look at that. So some people might have to mm -hmm. learn labels. Like my mom worked right. in like higher end consignment stores, so mm -hmm. she had to educate herself as a buyer and stuff. But um, learning labels, like follow fashion blogs, um, watch these YouTube videos where people are doing hauls and talking about labels that they're willing to pay up for. So you, so you need to do a little education, I think, about labels. Mm -hmm. So you might flip through and anyone's going to recognize like there's the Prada dress or something. Um, so learning labels, what's another tip? Well, I think, and maybe this is something that might be a little bit more difficult, but it's knowing quality. It's knowing how something is made. I also worked as an upholsterer. I just thought of that now. But I love fabric. Yeah, and that, that's, that's and huge. I'm so into fabric and quality fabric. So that could help. Just the way 
what something's made out of and the way it's put together. So that's two different things. So if you guys right. are in the chat, let us know like what your how do you find the good stuff? Do you have a strategy? Do you go to a certain place in the thrift store first? Are you looking up stuff on your phone? Like how are you finding the good stuff? And my mom just brought up two really important points that we could dissect. Like one of them is fabric. So certain fabrics are more expensive to make a garment out of. Like let's look at silk, like 100% silk. Um, if you're flipping through and you feel that like you feeling is the best skill that you have as a sourcer and some people wear gloves. Did you know that when they're outsourcing, especially if they go to the Goodwill outlet, the bins where you're digging through, you've been to the outlet, the, right, we call it right. the dig where we are. Right. And some people it's a little, you know, you're digging through clothes. Yeah, you don't know what you're going to buy. Oh, what's going to be there. You could get hurt. <laughs> so that's why. Right. But, and it, but I can't yeah. wear gloves, you guys, because, um, I need to be able to feel. So you are, when you are, you need to be using all your senses, but like touch is the most important. You're flipping through, everything looks the same, 50 red sweaters and then cashmere. I can feel cashmere. Can you guys like silk, cashmere, Pima cotton, lyocell, even linen. Like linen, th yeah. that's like, you're looking for good fabrics. Um, Dresden Avenue says, my mom took me shopping twice a year. I could go to the mall and get two things or go to a secondhand store and get 10 to 20 things. I always chose secondhand. I love it. You're our people, see? Like some people wouldn't, but you are so smart. Holly says the same thing. Feel mm -hmm. the fabric. And Holly says, silk, linen, quality cotton. Like there's a cotton called Pima, P-I-M-A. It's often made in Peru. And you can feel that. It's almost like silky and it is expensive. If you can find Pima cotton, it is going to sell. Oh, Karen, mom, you would love Karen from yeah. Red Revivals. Um, she and I have talked a bunch on Instagram. I finally made it. I still have to rewatch from the beginning. That's okay. You only missed like, oh my God, we've already been talking. See what happens? That's impossible. It's been almost like 15 minutes already. Oh my gosh. And we're supposed to go make dinner. So this isn't one of our epic long yeah. ones. I'm so glad you made it. And I saw, I thought I saw Jen come in. Here she is. Bora Bora. Jen is here. How cute is your mom? I mean, I know. And you can't tell because of the way... The way we're sitting, like she's she's so petite. Like, how tall are you? You don't have to say. Oh, uh, I know I'm shrinking. <laughs> so I like to say I'm at least five two, but I have a feeling I'm not quite even that. I know. That's why I love heels. I know. I know. Mm -hmm. I I think I yeah. lie and tell everyone I'm five. I used to say five five. I think my license says that, and I think I'm really like five three and a half. Oh well. Oh well. Um, and James says, I say, feel, touch, sight. After a while, you learn the labels for sure. But sometimes mediocre labels can produce cashmere items. Right. Yeah. And, and I'll buy like, I don't care if it's from Target, if it's cashmere, I'd still buy it because people, some people in the women's market, they love silk. Like I'll buy silk mm. tops or dresses, even if it's not like a crazy brand. So it's not only brand. A lot of people, especially newer resellers, they're just thinking, what are the brands that I can find? Because I watched Quimby's thrift haul video and these are the right. brands she said, but that's like beginning level because you'd also could buy something that has nothing to do with the brand. Right. Nothing to do with a label and it's fantastic. Right. So you have to just trust. You can trust. And I think it's learning too. Like many of you guys know that one of my best selling categories or themes on eBay is lag and look. If my mom stood up, she's like a perfect lag and look. It's like layering, layering. She's got like a, she looks so good right now. You got, She has like this gathered skirt on and then a long silky tunic and then another little ruffle sleeve. Look, show them the sleeve. Little ruffle sleeve blouse. I mean, that's lag and look and it sells. And I, I don't buy for brand and lag and look. I buy for that style. Knowing that I can put lag and look as a keyword in my title, it's going to sell for 40 bucks or more. So you have to know brands, but then it becomes like styles, fabrics. Let's see what everybody else. Isla Dream says, hi, everybody. Oh, there's your mom. Okay, going to settle down and just watch. I'll grab your drink, your tea, your wine, and settle in. And Rhonda Creek says, I love that hat. Oh, this is Where'd vintage. Where'd you get that hat? Oh, it is vintage. Oh, I got this. I don't know how many years ago when I was working in Massachusetts in a vintage clothing shop. I don't have many vintage things left. <laughs> I don't. But you do. Um, you have a lot of my moves. No, there. Well, a couple. But this is 
the oldest, best. I mean, is look it? at the way this is made. Yeah, what is this here? Is it like a? It's, it's a straw and some like silk. silk it looks like silk, or, raw silk. It yeah, is beautiful. It's just beautifully made. My mom has a collection of hats. She also has vintage shoes. If you went to my mom's house, it looks like kind of a museum. Like her room, everything's hanging, just so hat boxes and shoes and dresses. It's just gorgeous. <laughs> oh, Leslie says too, such a great hat, Barbara. Leslie yeah. bought like a vintage lot recently. Oh my god! And she have to see. This. Yeah, I have. To She's at a reseller's passion yeah. and um, she sold a vintage purse that she got in a box oh, yeah. like a mystery box for like over a hundred bucks. So wow. that's amazing. Um, Bora Bora Jen says, I hate that while wearing a mask, I can't smell things, perfume, BO, whatever. That is a good point because I am used to feeling and oh, I'll sometimes gosh. be like, yeah. hold it up to smell. I know I do not ah, like what a great the mask. Point. I know. Dresden Avenue says, it comes with experience. I never thought I'd be good at knowing quality by feel, but after reselling for almost a year, I've gotten good at it. It's true. And you can just get better and better and better. I mean, it does have to do with that. Um, Jacob says, I finally realized we weren't going to be able to afford the cool clothes as a teen. I found a new cool and alternative. And punk music, thrifted for the unique and sometimes atrocious gems. I know, like, if you've got some kind of alternative style, you want unique stuff. You want to go thrifting. Babette Sabol says, I've always liked thrifting, but I got away from it until one year ago. And when I sold my first item, I was hooked. I know. Once you start selling, it's like once I started selling, it was hard to um, go to the thrift store and not... Because it used right. to be like, you go for pleasure thrifting, right? Right. What do and you love about gifts it? gifts and mm. for other people, too, for the family, usually. And um, and the gifts I get, you know, I start early. Oh, I used to uh, when it was there, open. There are some open now. Well, we're we're going to go. Right. We'll do um, a thrift with us video. And I'd have everything by November so I could send off all the boxes in right. December. But unbelievable things right i mean of course you i have to admit that what it cost me to send the boxes back east Is that Derek? maybe made up for what i saved buying the gifts mailing yeah. the boxes but right. still worth it but you still go a lot of people thrift for pleasure like it's they oh, do that too like grab a nice coffee and just go thrifting people if you never know you never know what you're going to find. It's so fun. But then when I started reselling, it was like, it was so hard to just thrift for myself anymore because I'd see things and be like, I can flip that. That's an easy 30 bucks or something yeah. right there. So right. kind of became that. So other than fabric and brands, what are some other thrifting tips you have? Maybe for people that might be watching this video that are a little newer to thrifting or only been a year or so and they're trying to gain their experience. Talk a little bit, mom, about what you were talking about, about tags, tags on clothing. Well, I said before, a tag you recognize. But on the other hand, I there are still lots of tags I don't know about, but you can tell even from the tag and how it's made. It could be embroidered, it, a lot of work put into the tag, and you just know exactly that that's good. And so, like, let me give you this example. Exactly. You guys, tell me if you've ever found this. This is a first for me on my bolo list. What brands are on your bolo list, you guys, that you're like, you see everybody else finding, and you're like, I haven't found that brand yet. So this is one that I had heard of, but I, it wasn't jogging my memory. So tell me if you guys know this brand. This, so look at this tag, okay? So what my mom and I might notice about this tag is it's an oversized tag, and the writing is really unique, and it's just mm -hmm. tacked on there at the sides. Um, so I saw this at the thrift store recently when I finally got to go thrifting again. And I'm like, that's an interesting tag. And I don't even know if you can see that, but what it says is Ace and Jig. And I couldn't remember Ace and Jig. I was wow. like, no, I know I've heard it, but it wasn't on like my list of good brands put it in the car. So I put it in the car. This is the item. It's not like, this is a cool blouse, but it's not like, you can't like look at it immediately and say, wow, right? But this Ace and Jig blouse, I looked it up online. It's out of, it's sold out, retailed for $150 at wow. Ace and Jig. Now I couldn't remember Ace and Jig. I was like, is that no, something? I, I didn't. 
But if you saw this tag, would you stop and take notice if you were course, shopping for resale? As I'm looking at it more and more, yeah, I'm there's liking all, it more I know, and it's more. not for you, it's not for you. I mean, can you see Christmas time? And yeah. Isn't it something wonderful. It's a medium, that? guys. But uh, if anyone you know needs this in their yeah. life, it and then as you get closer, it does have special details. See the contrast of the fabric, and then there's all sorts of pleating and little buttons. So you don't have to know every brand. It is impossible as a reseller and a thrifter to know every single brand that's going to be good. Right. What you do need to know is when to stop and take notice. So it's like you feel something, some fabric that you're like, wow, that's good, or you see an interesting tag. Now, do I stop and look up every tag? No, I don't have that kind of time. But if I see something like this, it's like when I, I put it in the cart and then when I go to do my um, final check of like you get the whole card and you're looking for flaws, it's like, oh, okay. Right. Um, so I looked it up and I'm like, Ace and Jig, it's wow. so expensive. Keep your eye out for this brand. And then oftentimes if I don't know what the heck the tag says, have you ever had that where you're looking at a tag and you're like, what is that? Right. Oftentimes you can find a tag in the body oh, and then yeah. it's like written more clearly there, Ace and Jig. So there you go. So look for interesting tags because, because an interesting tag means the manufacturer spent more money to make that tag, just the tag, not the fabric or the item. So you yeah. know it's going to be good. So tags are, um, Babette says, interesting labels are a good starting point. That totally is what I was trying to say, but she said it perfectly. And I'm sitting there going on about, oh, I, don't I, don't know. Know. I don't know what it's going to be. <laughs> so look for the tags. Ace and Jig says, James, yeah, look it up. It's pretty awesome. Deborah Anderson says, also, if you can't read the tag, look up the RN number for a clue. There is like a site. It's like um, RN numbers. Yeah, you could do that. Um, and James says, that's a good point. I have found bolo items in my death pile because I thrifted them based on quality and realized what I had later on. Yeah. Wow. And sometimes you just have to like take a risk. But um, let's see. Deborah Anderson says, when my ex-mother-in-law passed away. That's the best start of a sentence. Couldn't that be like? Couldn't that be like a novel Beginning of a long story? You, know, you should what write. Kind of novel. That would be the first great opening when line. Ex mother in law passed away. Dot dot dot. Like I would Love keep on it. reading. <laughs> it was her vintage hats that my daughters chose to keep oh, and remember her. See, I know. I love that. I love that. Um, let's see. If I missed anything else up here, oh, this is for Deborah Anderson too. I get fooled into thinking something is silk when it's actually rayon. For yes. me, it's polyester. It's always like every uh, haul video, I'm like, could yeah. this be silk? Because it feels silky. Because I don't mind rayon. I, I don't mind rayon. rayon, isn't it? I don't know. It's, yes. I'm sure. So look at the tag on yeah. the inside. If you're not exactly sure, you're like, this feels good. I can't tell you how many times I've looked. Yeah. And I'm like, is this silk? Because if so, I'm buying it. And right. then you look and it's like polyester. I like, yeah. I mean, the polyester is fine too. It still feels really good. I know. But definitely I've been tricked too. So you can um, look there. Let's see. I'm just seeing if I missed anything up here. All right. Going back down. Okay. Let's share a few more tips. Have any of you guys find anything amazing at the thrift store lately? Oh, look, Deirdre Bridge made it. Oh, there's her, Hannah Hunter, Hunter Ryan says, RN numbers, I always ended up with the importer info. I know, I have a little hard time. Hey, um, Deborah, do you have like a good site or how do you do the RN number? If I have a style number, I can look things up, but the RN number, it always just seemed like I spent so much time looking, I didn't know if it was worth it. I'm playing with my hair a lot because it's still wet and it's drying in weird shapes. Anyone who has um, curly hair like ours, you know that that happens. Deirdre Bridge says, also, how great that your mom is here. I'd love to do a Q&A with mom. She looks like she'd have fabulous stories. I know. It's oh, so true. Thank you. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Thora says, there are fabrics. Are there fabrics you would avoid? Oh. I hate ironing. Hmm. Oh. oh, I love questions from the chat. I don't think there's anything I would avoid. I mean, there are some things like, some things that happen to fabrics like wool. You can tell sometimes if you go to a thrift store and you're looking through the sweaters and you're like, oh, this is wool. That's so great. But you can tell it's been washed because the and wool, it's, ruined. it's like a little <laughs> bit small and tight. Yeah. I wouldn't ever go near that. But linen. 
I love linen sleeves, I but some love people. Linen, but some people say, oh no, because you have to iron it. But now the new look, you don't have to necessarily iron it. Maybe just the way you would hang it up. But truly, uh, the new look can be wrinkled. There's a new look, a look yes. that is wrinkled. I'm saying. Oh. <laughs> I wear linen. I have linen pants on right now, yeah. and they're kind of wrinkled. Yeah, that's, that's what, what I mean. But then when you that's walk, what I, meant. I looked at your pants, and right, they look fine. But then when you get up and move around, it kind of like de wrinkles. Yeah. But like Thora has a kind of a professional job, and she might have to wear like right. blouses and button down shirts and blazers and, and stuff she's like a that. Very neat together. Person. Yeah, she's gorgeous. Um. Oh look, Kelly Schaffner made it. Ooh. Hi, Grateful Babette. Nice to meet you. Well, thank Kelly, I just opened my Stitch Fix box number two. I filmed it. And um, it was a much better box this time. Some of you might have seen my first Stitch Fix, and it was, like, pretty good but not excellent. This one was better, I think. Um, wool that squeaks has usually been overshrunk. I don't know what that means. How can you tell? What does that mean, squeaks, Holly? I didn't know that wool did that. I don't know either. She might know something. <sighs> Deborah Anderson says, I just Google RN66170 for it. So she just puts in Google RN66170. Well, like certain ones, like I think that's either free people or anthropology. Like if I want to tell if that's the brand that would help. I just find like I, here's the thing. I've been selling long enough now, you guys. I've been selling for nine years on eBay. And you know what? I totally forgot to do my intro at the beginning of the video. Just like I said I would. And you said don't let me forget. It's my fault. Because whenever I do the lives, like you're still supposed to say, "Hey, I'm Quinn B. I've been yeah. reselling nine years." Right. So if who somebody, are you? somebody right. turns in. who are you? You come yeah. out in the video, and I always forget to do it on the live. So, oh well. If you're watching, make sure that you hit that little thumbs up button and that you're subscribed. If you're not subscribed, with the bell turned on, you don't get notifications when we go live, and it's helpful if you hit that little thumbs up. Cotton, James says cotton and linen if you hate ironing. Ooh, what's Karen say? Mm. I found a pair of stubs and wooden today. Very excited. See, I want to pull wow. out my phone right now. Like, what is stubs? What is that, Karen? What's stubs and wooden? English. Oh, it does sound English, but I don't yeah. know what it is. Me See, either. when you've been reselling nine years like I have, and maybe some of you in thrifting, it's like I don't um I don't spend much time looking things up anymore when I'm at the thrift store. I just say like you know, I might look up a couple things like that ace and jig because I wanted to, but I do a lot more like you were saying, you trust your instincts, you touch right. something, you're like, this is pretty good. And especially if it's a good price. I mean, price really is true. Like what a chance if it was really expensive or more expensive than usual, then I'd look it up. Yeah, exactly. That's a really good point. Like, if they want, like, where we live, you guys, in Northern California, tell them the prices at Goodwill for, like, oh a dress. God. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's unbelievable. I have no idea what it is, but it's yeah. probably not good. Yeah. It just kept going up and going up and going up. Well, for example, where wow. we are, dress, $10, jeans, $10, long sleeve shirt, $7, yeah. um, sweater, I think is 7 or 9 so it's really expensive here. So my mom makes a really good point. If you're buying for resale and you're like, I think this is pretty good, but I'm not sure. And it's a $10 jacket. Maybe take the time to look it up. But I buy a lot of things based on style too, you guys. Not just, yeah. there's fabric, there's brand name, but I buy a lot for style. So it does help to know like what's trending, but also what's really classic. Like there's some stuff, I don't care that cold shoulder is trending this year or last year. Because, but I care about classic pieces. I'll yes. pay up for classic pieces. Right, that never go out of that style. That never go out of and style. And they don't. Oh, there's Petey. Huh? Little Black Dress or like right. Ralph Lauren, for example. Ralph Lauren's one of those brands that has been in style. I don't think that stuff's ever going out of style. No. If you I see a Ralph Lauren it. pencil skirt or a blazer. A bla jacket. It's like that's, it's going to be great. Yeah. Ooh, Thora said, I got oh. a Kate Spade purse for $10 at a yard sale. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I don't know if she knows. Yeah, I mean, I she probably, she, I could, yeah. I don't think she's had it authenticated, but it's probably real. Probably. Oh my God. It's in the I family. We had That's my sister. Yard sales. The yard sales here are not as great as on the East Coast. I've definitely and noticed that. Expensive. Everything's expensive here. 
Deirdre says, I don't iron unless it's absolutely necessary. I spent way too much time creasing my jeans in the 80s. <laughs> oh, that's so Do you funny. remember that in the 80s? You'd like fold. Everything was like linear. Listen, when I was first married, my first husband, I used to iron his underwear. Let's just let that that's hang what people in the air did them. So, I remember Peter, my Peter, who yeah. I live with now. Right. When we were having people over for dinner, he ironed the napkins. And I'm like, we use cloth napkins at our house. Mm -hmm. He ironed all the napkins. And I was like, huh. I, it's all, a little old fashioned, maybe, right? People don't. Right. But he still irons his yeah, his work short, shirts and stuff. Well, he is. He, he the dresses. Exception. He's okay. so handsome. Right. Thora says no to ironing. And Babette I says, I like researching what I bought when I get home because I'm not spending much on thrifting, but I have yeah. dabbled in retail arbitrage, but that's when you need to look it up. It's true. I think my mom made a really good point. The more expensive it is and you're, you're paying that much for cost of goods, you probably want to look it up. Retail yeah. arbitrage is when people go to like TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Nordstrom, and they buy new with tag stuff and they resell that. Oh, I've done, I have some videos from like TJ Maxx, yellow yeah, tag sale. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it is, it's usually a little more expensive, so you do want to pay attention a little bit more. Rhonda Creek says, my grandmother said they used to iron sheets. It's true. Oh, yeah. So, friends, so far for tips, we've talked about knowing your brands. We've talked about fabrics that feel amazing, like silk, for example. We've talked about interesting tags, even if it's not a label that you're aware of, mm -hmm. like that Ace and Jig shirt I showed you. It's an interesting enough tag to pique your curiosity, like, wow, they put some money into making that tag, it's probably a more expensive item. Another thing I'll throw in there too is dry cleaning tags. Because oftentimes, and you, I see different, there's the old fashioned dry cleaning tag that's right. like a little loop of paper, but they, they now have a digital one that's a barcode and it's stuck to the tag usually. Now, is that an indicator 100% every time that it's expensive? No, but think about it. If someone pays eight bucks to have their dress dry cleaned, it might be a nicer dress. Yeah. So sometimes if I see a dry cleaning tag, I'll be like, oh, that might be a nice piece. I'm going to look it up. But if the person buying has to spend that to have the dress cleaned every time, would they hesitate? Some people might. Like, a, Do you guys hesitate if an item you're I thinking would. about buying says dry clean only? I don't. I thought of that to right this minute. Right. I, I would. I mean... It's a good point, I, I, but I, it's usually the things that need to be dry clean that are better quality, nicer items. So I usually want to um, buy them. So I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Yeah. Oh, Karen's telling us about that brand. So oh. You saw it sounded English. Handmade shoes from Palm oh. Beach. And they're at least 500 oh. bucks retail. Wow. They're like fancy slippers. I'm going to Google oh, that. Fancy slippers. I like the sound of My that. mom loves slippers. She always has these gorgeous little embroidery type silky slippers. Post a picture maybe on K uh, on um, Instagram yeah. if you want, Karen, because then we could see. The light just changed. So another thing I want to talk about, um, fabrics. Okay, let me, let's, tell me this. Where, where is a section of the thrift store, mom, that you found good stuff but other people might overlook? Maybe they don't have a lot of experience or they're newer to thrifting and they might overlook a certain section of the thrift store. Well, I have to say, though, that I think it would be more like linens and that's not clothing. No, but, but that's to find oh, antique pillowcases, beautiful uh, dish towels. I mean, I still use all that stuff you and do. napkins and um, lace. I mean, real lace or um Quilt, quilts or quilt covers, I'm lace and yeah, I, I love that section and it's valuable. I think you're making a. I was hoping you'd say that actually because oh, it was good. like yeah. um, a lot of us who sell primarily clothes are still gonna pick up a lint something like a linen like say you see a Pendleton blanket or something or or, or some of those wool blankets. That sell for a lot. So do not sleep on the the bedding section, the linen section, because there's a lot of valuable stuff in there. Even like good name brands, like again, Ralph Lauren, Pottery mm. Barn, that mm. stuff sells. Like when I used to go to the bins. I like that. Yeah. And if you find like a set of four pillow shams, those are going to sell. 
So don't skip on the linen section. The other one that I'd say that I think even clothing resellers tend to sleep on and they shouldn't or is the sleepwear section. Has anyone ever found something amazing oh, great in the sleepwear section? So you may look at the section at my thrift stores. It's usually like robes, pajamas, mm -hmm. slips. And you'll like be looking and you're like, there's nothing good in there. Oh no. Gorgeous old fashioned vintage nightgowns I have found. Yeah. Oh my God, they're so good. I, have, I found La Perla last year. Yes. A La Perla a sleep top. I remember. I sold a Notori purple mm. sink silk um long slip for like 75 dollars it went um to an international buyer wow. uh barefoot dreams i sold a barefoot dreams that big heavy plush bathrobe with a tie for like right. 50 bucks for a used bathrobe so i think a lot of people skip the sleepwear section and the other thing about the sleepwear section that's so good you guys it's often cheap right like it's not they just don't mark that up right they don't run they, they're like yep. pajamas five bucks yep. and it's like a set yep. i sold there's a there is a pajama set called roller rabbit i found two pairs and they were like five dollars each great condition both of them sold for over fifty dollars so wow. do not skip certain sections thinking there's nothing in there right. get out of your comfort zone try something a little different and try some other sections so any other last thoughts for our good friends that came and hung out with us on a oh, Sunday yeah. afternoon? Just so to say, great. like, hey, let's hang out. Deborah says, I just sold a Victoria's Secret purple thermal waffle weave robe for close yes. to 40 bucks. So even wow. Victoria's Secret, it doesn't even have to be high end. But if you've ever gone into those stores, have you ever been to like Victoria's Secret at the mall? You mean no, I haven't. It is I like, haven't. it is so expensive. It's really pricey. I mean, I'm a thrifter, so it's like, it all seems I know it's pricey to me, yeah. but, oh, you guys are all having your own little chats. Oh. Jacob says, I could hear my iron and ironing board sobbing when I first got my steamer. Oh. I know, I love my steamer. It's like two seconds, blip, blip, yeah, done. So I have one linked in the description if anyone's like, I've been wanting to get a steamer. I think mine was like fifty dollars. Oh, so worth it. And it's like you just steam that thing, and things look so good for your photos, really quick. So and your own clothes, so you don't have to think about ironing. Yeah, Thora, you should get a steamer if you care right. about that sort of thing. Deirdre says I found a Laura Ashley nightgown one day for two dollars at a wow. small independent thrift. It sold for thirty, but it sold in one day. And you know what? those vintage Laura Ashley, the dresses that people wore like in the eighties, mm. super florally conservative lace, lace, um, collars and all really ultra right. feminine, kind of like cottage core. Do you know what cottage core is? No, but I can tell from the way you're saying. Right. Yeah. yeah. So cottage core is like this new trend that we should all know about. Oh. And, um, it's very feminine floral prints almost like mm. prairie wear mm. and so if you have something that fits like with sweet little floral laura ashley s yep. you can put cottage corn your title and stuff selling pretty well like that and jacob says don't forget a thumbs up for our two queens i know thank you so <gasps> much okay friends we are gonna head out because mm -hmm. torvald and peter and grammy and i he calls her grammy but grateful but are gonna have some dinner we're grilling some chicken and I made a green salad. I'm going to make a little noodle salad. It's going to be amazing. So we're going to have our family dinner. But I appreciate you so much for coming to hang out with my mom. Thank yes. you so much for coming. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you, everyone. It was an honor to be here and to meet you. And I we'll really appreciate it. And she's usually in the chat on Friday. And she and I are going to collab and do some, like, Drift With Me videos because it yeah. would be fun. So we look forward to seeing you on those. If you still want more Grateful Queen for some odd reason, I put out a video today um, with a Goodwill wholesale new tag order. And I do a little try on. And it's super fun. And I love your feedback. So thanks for being with us. Good night. It was so great to have you. And we'll see you on Friday for Live at 5.